It started with the um, opening day. We met all candidates and I personally realized that there were so much people in this competition as we were 66, so it's quite a lot. The first day was theory, second day was practical, everything was qualification and um, that night of the second day we were split between those who were going for, for the semi-finals and those who weren't and I was among the guys who weren't going so um, so my competition finished after the, the second day uh, but for the others there were 19 of the uh, semi-finalists uh, which had to go uh, the next day the third day for the semi-finals so it was a day off on the fourth days and finally uh, the fifth days were the final We put ourselves to the task pretty fast and um, I think I, I, I did very well in the, in the quarterfinals and the first huge step and tasting was strong and um, uh, we had the announcement which was tough. We are now here to announce the 19 semi-finalist, candidate number 66, <laughs> 7, 64, 17. 55, Frederick Lindfors from Sweden. And the last one, the last semi-finalist is going to be number 51. These are the 19 semi-finalists. Fantastic group. We had the announcement, which was tough for our delegation because uh, we wish both of us would have go through and um, but you know, it, it wasn't the case, and my name uh, got to the 18th uh, number when there was 19 candidates. So I don't want to say nerve-wracking, but uh, I was ready. You know, uh, since I started that, I, I, if I pass, I pass, and if I don't, I don't. And I was ready for the semi. But it was a great relief to pass, and went to bed quite early, and and um, did the semis the other day, and I felt very well. I think it it went great, and. Mm. So talking of the special, um, winter season, Belgium, we got what's it called, the Caviar de Nord, which is a uh, hot shot. I don't want to say I have any regret. Um, when you look at the tasks, tasting a Chinese wine was, was kind of different. Um, but you know, it is what it is, and everybody had to, went to go through that. The most challenging part, I think, is still something about what doesn't have to do with competition. So, you know, uh, we, were, uh, we were asked to participate in all master classes, which is completely normal, and it needs to. So we, um, we don't eat a lot, we don't sleep a lot, and this might be not that serious to take in part, but it's kind of complicated to deal with when you're always hungry and when you go home at the night and you, you still have to find something to eat before going to sleep because you need to be on top of the game the day after. So that was a bit complicated to, to manage. It's a little bit like the, I don't want to say the all-star weekend in hockey, but there's a lot of sponsor around, right? There's a lot of um, people investing in that and it's a huge opportunity for them to present their, their product. And I have a lot of respect for that and attending all those master class and, and beefing up our knowledge was, was, was amazing. But, uh, you need to realize that uh, that week is not a lot of hours of sleep and you need to, uh, to keep in good health and, and that's a big challenge, you know, and I think, I don't want to say it's done on purpose, but um, you need to be prepared physically to be, um, to be tired and, and, and having to perform at a tired stage is something that some people did better than others. What I would change is my approach and how I see the, the competition itself. So I would say, and for every other competitor, my advice would be like, don't lose your life and yourself into the training. Just, you know, if you have interrogation, go the deepest you could be. Uh, in this interrogation, but make sure you continue to live your life because 
what worth it. If for you, it like training means sacrifice, maybe think about something different. There's no secret. I mean, you. I think our craftsmanship add more um, add more attention than it ever add in it, its all history. You know, like we're 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 talking right now about different question and we're we're discussing our craft but historically I don't think that was it you know and uh, you need to be careful to not climb uh, the ladder too fast and when you'll climb that ladder make sure that people down there are more scared than you are you know um, and, and, and to build expertise and confidence comes with experience and you can't rush it uh, so Take your time, good mentorship, work hard, and realize that uh, success and recognition from peers comes with time. It's a craft about being articulate more than, than being knowledgeable. and. Um, and Mark showed it very well in the final. You know, when you look at most of the tasting, nobody's really performing very well, even in the spirit zone. Um, and, uh, but service-wise, and how he made people felt, was, to me, pretty obvious that he was the winner. Uh, so, how do you teach that? Do you wake up in the morning and, and do a round of flashcard and, 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 and memorize maps? or you just truly take care of your guests. I was in a bus going to a master class and I was sitting beside Mark Almer and this guy was very uh, humble and just relaxed and was asking questions, listening to answers and, and answering the questions and it was so, um, and, and, and he's kind of shy and there's something about this guy which I think makes him a real good candidate for being the best summary of the world. The winner of the 2019 best summary of the world is Mark Almet from Germany. At the end of the day, it was a great week and, and we learned a lot and we, we go through things and this is a snapshot of our reality. And like I said, it's not about me, it's about the sommelier and, and, the, and the people. And uh, uh, we're happy that in 2019, uh, people were talking about it uh, much more than in previous editions, so that's positive for us. More people drinking wine, so more opportunity to, uh, to serve it and, and to serve it in the right fashion.